Okay, in this video we're going to look at an example of solving a non-homogeneous second order linear differential equation uh, with the method of variation of parameters. So let's recall um, the summary of a solution for uh, such a problem. So if we have a differential equation given as follows, y double prime plus p of xy prime plus q of xy equals g of x, we have a solution y equals c1y1 plus c2y2, so that's the homogeneous part of the solution. So I, so I should say that y1 and y2 are linearly independent solutions of the corresponding homogeneous solution. And then v1y1 plus v2y2 times yp. So that's, or sorry, that is the particular part of the solution. Good. So, and then these functions v1, v1 and v2 are given by the following formulas, which we derived in an earlier video. So we have v1 is negative, the antiderivative of g of x times y2 over the Ronskian. V2 is g of x, y1 over the Ronskian, and just as a reminder, this W is the determinant of the matrix column-wise, y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. Okay, good. So now we're going to look at this differential equation. So as you see, uh, the solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation is an important thing to find in order to construct our general solution. So let's do that. So let's look at the homogeneous equation. So that would be y double prime plus y equals zero. Great. So this one's fairly simple. We can look at its uh, characteristic polynomial. So u squared plus one equals zero. And so that has uh, roots u equals plus minus i. And then by the, by the theory for solutions of homogeneous second order linear differential equations, we know that y of h will be given by c1 cosine of x plus c2 sine of x. So that means we'll set y1 equal to cosine of x and we'll set y2 equal to sine of x. Great. Now from here, we can use these formulas that we constructed in the previous video to find what v1 and v2 are. So notice our g of x in this case is the secant function. So um, let's see. We have v1 equals negative the antiderivative of g of x. So that will be secant of x times y2. So y2 is sine of x over the Ronskian. So uh, let's recall the Ronskian, so that will be the determinant. So I'll do it out in all its details here and then we'll just use the result as we move forward. So this will be the determinant of cosine of x, uh, negative sine of x, sine of x, cosine of x, dx. So we have y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. Great. But the great thing here is that notice what this determinant is. It's cosine squared minus negative sine squared. So it's cosine squared plus sine squared. So this whole thing is just the number one. And that gives us negative, the antiderivative of secant times sine. So recall that secant is one over cosine. So that means this is negative, the antiderivative of tangent of x. And then that will be negative, the natural log of secant of x. Just like looking up a um, on an integral chart or just recalling from calculus 2 the antiderivative of tangent. And then we can bring this negative inside the natural log, make that natural log of secant to the negative 1, which is the natural log of cosine. Great. So there's our function v1 is the natural log of cosine. Now let's look at v2. So v2 will be the antiderivative of g of x, so that'll be secant of x, times y1, so that will be cosine of x, over 1, because we calculated that the Ronskian was 1, and then dx. So secant of x is 1 over cosine, so this will be just the antiderivative dx, so that's just the function x. Great. So now we can use this form of a general solution to write down our general solution. So that will be c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x plus 
v1 times y1. So I'll write that as cosine of x times the natural log of cosine of x. Great. And then v2 times y2, so that'll be plus x sine x. And that will be uh, the final answer.